further ado, I want to present our next speaker. He's a friend of mine who's been here in Mexico. He's working in San Miguel. He's doing freedom cell work out there. And he also has a podcast called The Borderless Podcast. We're going to hear from his presentation in just, well, right now. Please welcome James Guzman, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you, brother. All right. This is great. Thanks so much for inviting me. Um, John and Derek, this is phenomenal, right? Let's give it a, a round of applause to them and everybody that came. <clears throat> it wasn't planned, but, uh, does this work? Maybe I'll just do this. Uh, it wasn't planned, but um, what I'm gonna be talking about is very much in line with uh, Catherine Austin Fitz. So uh, if, I know people might watch this on a recording. You might wanna go back and watch hers as well after you're done with this. So. Anyways, as you said, I'm uh, James Guzman, and um, sorry, I'm James Guzman. I'm uh, have a borderless podcast and a blog, uh, have a YouTube channel as well, so you can check that out. Um, I've been involved in the what they call the Liberty Movement for like 15 years, and uh, moved out of the U.S. about 10 years ago or more. And uh, since then, I've been helping people that want to live internationally, specifically here in Mexico. I help people with real estate. Uh, uh, advice on uh, immigration and uh, insurance or whatever that, that people need to do with their transition to come down here uh, and being more international with uh, with themselves and their their investments, their assets. Um, so today's talk, I'm going to uh, outline a, um, a book and the book is um, called The Fourth Turning. I don't know, have, has anybody here ever heard of that book? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's an old book. A lot of people talk about it. Um, on especially like uh, online investment uh, podcasts and things like that. A lot of people are familiar with it. And uh, so I'm going to outline that book and we'll talk about maybe some of the things that we can take from that, how it uh, goes along with other people's predictions about what we're living through, what we're going to see, and then maybe how we can use some of the, uh, the, uh, the things that they <clears throat> tell you to uh, do in that book uh, in our own lives, how I've used it. And so that's, that's my plan today. I think I have uh, allergies or something, so I apologize for that. I'm not sure <clears throat> if it uh, messes up the speech here. So um, let's go. Uh, okay. So the book is uh, written by William Strauss and Neil Howe, and it's about the cycles of history and how they apply to the destiny, that it, destiny of the United States. They took uh, all these cycles um, from uh, all different societies throughout the world, and then they juxtaposed that to um, the United States to see uh, where we might be today and uh, what, uh, how, what we can do to prepare for the future, knowing that thing, uh, those things. Um, as, okay, um, so hopefully what I'm help, uh, hoping is that uh, with this talk, we can help you solidify what the future conditions are that you should be planning for and how one can survive and even thrive through this transition. All right, so yeah, the first slide here. So, um, so as I said, this is a theory of cycles um, and uh, they actually wrote several books, but the, the most popular one and uh, the uh, what the word comes from is called The Fourth Turning. Um, and uh, you could think of it as cycles or you could think of it as the uh, seasons of history. So essentially what we're talking about is um, just as there are seasons of life, uh, seasons throughout the year, um, seasons of life meaning when you're young, middle-aged, older, these are different points in your life, uh, different points in the year. And they, they would argue that there are also seasons of societies that go through cycles. Um, the last speaker was talking about cycles. And um, so that's, that's basically what they're talking about. Each season uh, from their analysis is about 20 to 22 years. And four of them together is what they call a saculum. And saculum in Latin means uh, a long human life or a natural century. Okay, so one full one of these is a saculum. And next slide, please, we'll show you uh, we have the next slide. Ah, there we go. Um, so this is uh, the breakdown that they have for the United States and the different saculums and turnings. Um, so you can see it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, give you a second to look at that. And um, they, uh, they talk about seven uh, specific saculums in uh, Anglo-American history. That's what we're talking about. And uh, they go into depth into each of the characteristics of each of these turnings and the archetype of the people that are born into them. And uh, they really, obviously, it's a, you know, it's a 
long book, so they go into a lot of details about this. I'm not going to go into all that, but if you're more interested, you can. I would urge you to read the book. Um, there are four seasons, which is starts with high, awakening, unraveling, and crisis. Anybody uh, guess what which one we're in now? All right. Yeah, and so from their analysis, they say that this started in 2008, um, which you know might make sense makes sense to a lot of people that you know like me that were uh, were young at that time, maybe just getting started in the economy, working. Uh, maybe buying first house at that time, and then everything crashed, and it's never really been been the same since then. Um, and they would say that um, it ends about 2029. Um, they characterize crisis as an era of destruction, often involved in war or revolution, in which institutional life is destroyed and rebuilt in response to a perceived threat to the nation's survival. After the crisis, civic authority revives, cultural expression redirects towards community purpose, and people begin to locate themselves as members of a larger group. Um, this is not in the book, but I do want to point out that you'll notice in this last saculum, it, uh, I find it to be unique from the other ones, in that uh, we're talking about the post-World War II order right, or what some people would call the uh, global American empire, which we've been kind of in where the United States has basically maintained order throughout the world through um, its hegemony from the economy underpinned by the United, by the uh, US dollar. Also, you know, uh, entities like the World Bank, IMF, NATO, that are basically controlled by the United States. So if we do have this, Turning, we're not just talking about something in the United States, we're talking about something that's gonna affect the entire world, or as some people say, we all know, new world order, right? So that would go along with this, uh, this book. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, so put it basically, uh, probably a lot of people have seen this popular meme. It kind of, it goes along with, with the idea that, you know, um, hard times create strong men, strong men create Good times, good times create weak men, weak men create hard times, okay? That's kind of the idea, I'm simplify it. Um, uh, some, and of course, a lot of people, if you you know look it up, you're gonna see a lot of people are going to criticize the theory of the, of the uh, turnings um, of this book because they'll say, well, it's pseudoscience, not scientific, and, and that's true, it's not, okay? It's not something scientific, this is a speculative theory. Um, it could be completely wrong, so I just want to put that out there, and uh, maybe we can go back to uh, the 90s, early 2000s, and it'll be like that for the next thousand years. Could happen. Um, and, you know, a lot, another thing kind of uh, I, I think about is uh, maybe some people are familiar with Dave Smith. He's kind of a libertarian uh, comedian, podcaster. He has a com comedy special, and he said, uh, and when he has a bit, and he said, I don't know if there's uh, any historians out there. But uh, if you please tell me if there was a country that uh, uh, was a great nation, uh, it was, I'm sorry, <clears throat> it was a country that was a great nation, a superpower. It first started out as a republic, turned into an empire. It spread itself way too thin militarily. Then the culture started to fall apart and uh, it, it overspent and then everything turned out great. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, I mean, it, it does seem that it would make sense that you, you'd have these cycles or things kind of have a, uh, inevitability. And um, and I do want to point out also that uh, other people make predictions that seem to match up with that theory uh, almost perfectly. So uh, another person who has written about uh, similar cycles of society is Ray Dalio, who is a billionaire hedge fund manager, very popular. Um, and he has this book, Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order, where he argues that about the same time period, uh, the United States is going to recede in power and China is going to uh, be the dominant power. That's just it. Uh, we also have both the Great Reset and uh, Agenda 2030, which, you know, kind of put in the same bucket. And uh, they also predict uh, changes in the coming world order, as you can see, 2030, right? So it kind of matches up with that. And uh, they're not only predicting, but I would say trying to influence uh, the future, uh, to be more favorable to themselves. They argue that this has to do with climate change, COVID, rising fascism, uh, xenophobia, cyber attacks, 
stuff like that um, that are just kind of naturally occurring. But uh, I, I see it as simply them trying to push for their own financial and ideological interests into um, 2030. And if you think that it's far fetched that this has any that that has anything to do with this book, uh, I want to point out that actually um, Al Gore read uh, the fourth turning, uh, the original actually the original book and all of them. But when he read the original book, which put forth this this theory of turnings, he said. Uh, Quote, it was the most stimulating book on American history that I ever read, and he sent it out to everybody in Congress. So a lot of people uh, in, you know, places of power have been reading this, so uh, might have something to do with it. Um, also, this all may seem very kind of uh, deterministic, and, and a lot of these things are, are a way that we don't want to go. Uh, kind of a, a white pill, I would say, this book, The Sovereign Individual, which is a book I like a lot. I read in college that kind of truly changed my outlook on a lot of things. I would recommend people read it. And in it, uh, they argue that uh, we will have a depression during these years during, due to the collapse of the, the, kind of the welfare state in Western countries. And because of uh, technology, they will have a more of a decentralizing rather than centralizing effect. And they call the uh, Agenda 2030 Great Reset crowd the... Uh, uh, the great, the new world disorder, because they say that'll all fall apart because of a lot of different decentralizing technologies that we have, and uh, so it's kind of a, a, a positive way of looking at it. Um, so anyway, so that that's I think that um, that's that's the wild card here. If you know if this is in any way correct, we're, what is uh, what is it going to look like after? And that's what we can influence. I think that's what a lot of people have talked about today is uh, getting getting ready for that. And um, how we can uh, have a you know a high or another part you know the next cycle that will be favorable, and um, so again uh, the the according to the book uh, we're living through the crisis phase which is characterized by institutional destruction, war or revolution, economic downturns, terrorism, governments printing money, individualism reaches its peak, uh, and. Uh, from the U.S. perspective, you can think of other crisis phases such as the American Revolution, Civil War, uh, Great Depression, and World War II. Um, all right. Yeah. The next slide, please. So, um, somebody back there? Okay. So, yeah, the, the, uh, the title of the talk is to act your age. And what that means is, um, you know, uh, just as you... You know, as a teenager, you're not act, you're not going to act like someone who's 90 years old. Um, you uh, need to act for the age that you're in. Um, uh, so, uh, in that case, we know that we're going through the crisis age, and uh, once through that, we should be prepared for to try to uh, prepared to try to rebuild new institutions. So, the first thing um, that we can do, these are all put forth in the book, and I'll, I'll kind of uh, go through them and then expound on how maybe personally we can, I, I'm doing that, and how you might uh, want to incorporate that into your life. So, first thing um, that they talk about is rectify, meaning returning to classic virtues. A quote from the book, uh, build a reputation as a person of honor and integrity who values self-restraint, family commitments, cultural decency, and mutual trust. They also stress that it is not a good time to be a free agent with a reputation for being disloyal, changing deals, or being hard-nosed with everyone you deal with. Um, they say that it is a bad time for those who are perceived as predatory or parasitic. Okay, the next one is converge. Uh, during the fourth, uh, turning the population's core will be more important than diversity. Uh, you do not want to be unplugged or distant from your community. Another quote that they say, if you belong to a racial or ethnic minority, you should try to prepare for a possible nativist backlash. The next one is bond. Anonymity will be discredited and direct personal linkages will be valued. Having well-positioned friends could be very important. Face-to-face -face contact could gain new importance. Gather, people will value those with a, with a good reputation that can work well in teams. As they've said before, uh, this turning is when individual and pe individualism peaks and people look for those that have things in common with and can work with. Uh, you might want to uh, raise your children in a way where they can work in groups and uh, integrate into uh, the community. Next one is root. Your family will become your ultimate safety net. 
Um, they encourage people to maintain all relationships with your extended family. Being, uh, being far from a family, especially as a retiree, could cause extra hardship. Someone wealthy might want to consider transferring their assets now to possible heirs to avoid uh, estate taxation uh, and other government restrictions later on. One quote is, if you have no spouse or children, you should develop an alternative family-like support network among friends, neighbors, and coworkers. The fourth turning will not be a good time to be socially stranded. Then we have brace. Uh, during this turning, today's government supply of senior ben benefits could erode sharply. Things like Social Security and Medicare could turn out to be more, no more reliable than the earlier promises of the Continental or Confederate dollars, meaning not reliable. The best way to guarantee good health care in old age is to practice good health habits today. And one quote is, discuss with your family how the burdens of old age would be shouldered if and when public assistance becomes unavailable. And then finally, we have hedge, meaning basically uh, diversifying what you do, diversify everything you do, being fluent in as many languages, cultures, technologies as you can. Your business could face the total alterations of market conditions, expect public subsidies to vanish, regulatory environments to change quickly, and new trade barriers to arise. Avoid leverage investments and leverage debt. Invest heavily in uh, equities to profit now. If you, have, if you are going to invest, you might want to do it now before there's a big crash or something, uh, and try to make money while you can. Um, before the end of the unraveling, um, they say, hedge your portfolio and include assets in mutual and foreign markets where the same cycles do not appear to coincide with that of the United States. Uh, you can try to ensure that no one, no one outcome such as inflation, deflation, market crash, bank panic, default on national debt would destroy uh, your entire savings or asset base. So that's what they say. And I'll kind of go through my take um, and what I'm doing and maybe what you could do as well. Um, a lot of the things that they mention are about building relationships. That's what we're, we're doing now, I hope. That's kind of the idea uh, with uh, the Greater Reset and Freedom Cells. And um, so you want to build uh, relationships with people around you and build networks. Um, of course, I've come to the same conclusion. And I've done that with, with my podcast, uh, videos, blogs, stuff like that with online relationships, which is great. But I think that in order to, to build... Um, you know, real in-person relationships, it's, it's a good idea to be somewhere where you have some kind of roots, which is why uh, I personally, I, I was a, what you call like a digital nomad, you know, uh, living out of your backpack, that type of thing, traveling around and all that for, for a long time. And I've, I've changed that. And now I'm just, you know, completely an expat. And I, I live here. I have an extended family. Um, my wife's side, my, I got my parents to, uh, to move down here as well. So, you know, we, we have a place that I like and, and, and kind of that network. Um, so I would say try to think of a place where if you do have family in a place, and, that, and that's great. And uh, maybe try to, um, to bring them there or something like that. And I, and, um, I understand that everybody doesn't have that luxury, but um, you can also try to build other types of, of networks and kind of choose your family, as, as people say, um, by, you know, starting. If you don't know where to start, you could start... Uh, Regular meetups, obviously, I think it goes without saying, freedom cells. Um, and if you don't have a freedom cell, wherever it is that you like, what, what do you think you should do? Start one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, volunteer. Uh, I, I did that when I first um, moved down to Mexico. Um, I would volunteer at a lot of the events to uh, do um, photography um, and other things like that. And I really got to know people really quickly. Not only is it a good way to network, but, um, you know, it's reputation, right? They talked about reputation. So you build a reputation as someone that, um, you know, you're there to help and be part of the part of the, part of the community. Um, again, you don't want to be looked as kind of parasitical or uh, outside, an outsider. Um, diversify. It's a good idea to diversify your skill set. Um, a lot of people like me, when I was talking about the digital nomad thing, you have skills that you can use online. Um, like WordPress, graphic design, and uh, pay-per-click ads and things like that. Well, that's might not be so great. Some, you know, you, you need to um, think about maybe some manual skills, um, things that uh, that you could use. Like I would say, we're here in Mexico now. For a lot of you that live here, or maybe you are thinking of moving down here, number one thing you should do is probably learn Spanish, right? <laughs> if you don't know, um, so 
<laughs> um, imagine that the internet went out, right? How would you make a living? Okay, you really need to not think about that hard. So, you know, maybe things like um, carpentry, electric work, gardening, healthcare, um, and, uh, you know, things that you can fall back on, maybe start as a, a side hustle or, or something like that. And that, and then building that is going to be, you know, what we're talking about with an agorist, agorist, or a, a parallel network. That's what you can build into that, that you can fall back on or be a hundred percent of uh, make your living on there. As far as entitlements and pensions, uh, people that do not think about uh, people that don't think about their old age, uh, a lot of times they get put into really bad circumstances. I see that a lot. Um, here in Mexico, helping people, you know, plan, um, and then they they just don't, or they don't think about it, and, and then they get put in really bad uh, circumstances if something emergency was to happen, or slowly, which is even worse. Um, so, uh, just think about uh, if you're if you're taking government money or government assistance or a pension, if that's what you're living on, think about it again. If that's if that's not there, what what are you going to do? How would you make a living? Or uh, you know, things like that. So um, it's also good to do from a business perspective, uh, maybe not specifically, maybe you're not getting like government money directly into your business, but your clients are. So think about, you know, in this crisis mode, how that might affect your clients and maybe how you can pivot whatever it is that you do um, to to focus on maybe a, a different market or broaden the people that you uh, that you sell to. Um, as far as getting ready for uh, retirement, if, if uh, you found a base, I would say you should consider buying land there. Um, it's not just from an investment perspective or to rent it out or whatever, but it's you know, a place that you have peace of mind, you know it's a place that you like, you're comfortable, and you can incorporate, incorporate all the things that we talked about yesterday, the permaculture and uh, food independence, and that's some of the best investments you can do, uh, you know, buy a seed and you know, have tomatoes for a long time, right? So, um, so I think that's that's a, a great thing to think about. Um, and uh, uh, another thing that uh, Catherine Austin Fitz uh, spoke about: uh, precious metals, um, commodities. Those are uh, good things in general to hold during these times uh, when they talk about money printing, right? And um, if you have a, a, if you do have some kind of stocks, think about uh, buying them in different markets. Hopefully, you can get some, some uh, return dividends and, and markets that aren't. 100% uh, correlated with uh, the United States economy. Uh, keeping cash outside of banks, different currencies, I also think is a good idea. And uh, when you are using banks, uh, you know, think about it consciously what banks you're using. It does not have to be a bank that you, you know, with somewhere you live, uh, although maybe you like to do that person to person, but, you know, go to a bank that you trust, maybe you like their, their practices um, and, you know, not don't just bank with any big bank again, as Catherine Austin Fitz was, was talking about. I think that's a good thing to think about. Um, also, uh, diversifying what you call a government risk, which is getting um, residencies, passports. We saw how um, uh, important this was with COVID. Um, I know, you know, again, we're talking about agorism. You know, some people want to just uh, find ways that they can not do that, and I mean, that's fine. But another way you can think about it is to actually have more. Um, so have uh, more residencies in places or passports that um, you won't be restricted from leaving or from going somewhere um, in one of the hubs that you've chosen. Also, uh, I think we all know you want to diversify your media, media consumption. Uh, we all do that, I think, here and, you know, going to uh, learning through events here like the Greater Reset. Um, yeah, so that's an overview of at least one theory of what we are living through and how to prepare. And I hope that can spur some of uh, to you to think about the future, incorporate some of the ideas uh, to get through the current season and uh, make the one coming one positive for yourself and hopefully all of us. So that's all I got. Thank you. <laughs>